Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And uh, today we have uh, Sam, who is uh, trading 180. Um, in the Trading 180 group, Trading 180 student, and uh, Sam's been, been with me for a while, and I wanted to get him on uh, to get his experience, really, with being with Trading 180 and the highs and lows, I guess. Um, Sam, welcome. Hi, hi, Leon. How's everything? How you doing? You are right, yeah? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. Brilliant. So, um, just starting off, uh, just tell us a bit about your background and how you kind of got into Forex trading. Okay, so... I don't know really what drew me to trading originally. Maybe it was like, you know, you see it in films and TV, like you see stock trading and stuff like that. Mm. And then eventually you do some, re I did some research online along those lines and I came across something called binary options, which oh, is, um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It's uh, it's very like, you could say it's gambling because you, yeah. you have to trade against time. Yeah. But as some, when I was young, this is like when I was 17 or something, Mm. It's very attractive like you could probably turn like 100 quid to 200 quid and like when mm. you're long, young it just it drew me to that but that's what got me into kind of looking at forex mm. but then I, I went through a journey of like finding out how to trade where I joined loads of different groups paid like obscene membership fees mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. been like been hurt a couple times and mm. but you know eventually I came across um drew one of your past students right goes yeah to the same uni as me and he told me about trading 180 that's how yes, I, I remember yeah 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 he did yes <laughs> yeah my yeah that's, that's how i came but do what what else did you want though um no that's fine i was just um asking like you know how you came across i guess trading forex trading and uh i guess yeah. you know how you met you know me was through uh through drew who's doing really well isn't he yeah, he's he's been he's been really successful, I believe. Yeah, brilliant. I'm gonna try and get Drew on and um we'll organize something as well, an interview uh with Drew. So um when you first got into, I guess, trading, um most traders, I guess, they kind of um start off with technical strategies, right? Mm. So do you remember what types of technical strategies you were using before, you know, uh uh joining trading 180? Yeah, so so it was like um you do, you know, like channels, um, mm -hmm. triangles, like, oh, when there's three touches in the the channel, then you enter here on the cell. <laughs> and, and in those types of groups, I remember they had like, you had pairs that you just don't go near for some mm. reason. So like Euro Swiss was a pair you don't touch because it traded like quotation. It was like an ugly pair to trade. And, you know, it was just, it was a bit crazy, like, I don't know. At the time, you go for technical strategies because it's it's quite appealing. Like, oh, you look for this mm -hmm. pattern recognition. You know, we can all do that. We can all draw some lines. And and if it makes you money, then it's amazing. It's like, oh my god, why don't why aren't there so many people trading? This is crazy. Mm. But it's yeah, it was mainly pattern trading like that. Yeah, I mean, I've I've, I've had the same journey, right? And and um, you know, you buy, bought a whole load of courses. Um, and uh, more drawn to the uh, to the technical side, right? Because it is literally just pattern trading. It's like you see, you know, touches against support and resistance, or like mm. you say, channels, or it's just this indicator saying buy or sell. And um, generally, you know, when we get into trading, you know, it seems like that's what it is. But for some reason, technicals, you know, you, you quickly find, I say quickly, or maybe slowly find out that, you know what, there's something more to this, right? exactly you you don't you kind of like um you don't believe like the banks are trading by looking at a channel or something <laughs> like the institution the institutional traders aren't trading like that and i knew there was more behind it because it was for me it was like i was just breaking even it was like oh sometimes this pattern isn't always working like and you go on a whole rabbit hole you're like oh what's the best pattern to trade mm. or like you try and refine it like you, you try to find a way but like eventually you realize you find out about fundamental analysis and then yeah in comes like trading 180 and all that so. yeah that's 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 a great segue right so what was it i guess about fundamental analysis um and maybe what what made you decide or do you remember the moment that you said you know what there's more to this technical analysis thing i've got to learn fundamental analysis what was it about fundamental analysis you know that kind of drew you to thinking that you had to maybe 
you know, learn a bit more that might be what was missing from your trading? So like, I think oh, I'm trying to remember the key event. I think it was, um, it could have been Brexit or something. I'm not sure. There was just a key event in the news that like moved the market crazy. And I'm like, wow, you could probably profit off this because you could like, like certain events you could see coming and then it moves price like crazy. It's like, how can I profit off this? And like at the time I was like, maybe I could combine it with my technical trading, you know, mm. if I, if a pattern lined up and then there's like news and all that. But yeah, eventually I just started reading into like news more. Like you start off with like looking at the economic calendar thinking, oh, there's an event at this time. It's going to move the market. And then there's like no movement. So then that's like a learning curve in itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember those days as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to go further, but the base, the basis of my fundamental learning was from your course for sure. Okay. So fundamental analysis uh what were what are i guess some of the uh benefits to learning fundamental analysis because because a lot of traders think that fundamental analysis is you know it's a bit of mumbo jumbo when it doesn't work everything you need to know about you know what's going to happen is in a price chart you know you hear this this type of this type of talk so if somebody's you know out there listening right now and is you know maybe that way inclined or maybe just sitting on the fence about learning fundamental analysis what would you say were you know some of the uh key things about learning fundamental analysis and why would you why would you even bother take the time um i would do it because it helps refine your trades like i remember when i used to scroll through all 28 pairs <laughs> trying <laughs> trying to find opportunities and it it takes a toll on your time as well mm -hmm. so learning fundamental analysis you can really refine your the pairs that you want to trade you can and you know it's backed fundamentally by uh, maybe we'll delve into it a bit later but like yeah. interest rates uh inflation so like you're only trading the best divergences you don't have to focus on 28 pairs you can focus on like five and you're sure of the the long-term direction or like or like at least 80 percent sure mm. and it gives you a greater sense of confidence as well yeah it, it really does right because we know the rules to the fundamental analysis game um which you know when it comes to you know any i guess asset class there are fundamental drivers it's crazy how people would say oh technical analysis is is what drives price and it's like well that doesn't make any sense because people are just buying and selling based not first of all not everyone's looking at a price chart whenever they buy and sell mm -hmm, <laughs> you know exactly. what i mean like, like do you buy and sell you know property based off of technical uh, yeah, analysis exactly. it's crazy you know you don't you buy it based off of is it in a nice area is the crime rate high or low are there good schools is there good transport links do you know what i mean like exactly. that is what is fundamental analysis i know it's an everyday life you, you kind of incorporate it without knowing yeah know? but for some reason in forex or in you know other other asset classes there are people that think you know that it doesn't apply right it's crazy it's crazy but um so you were saying that for example fundamentals helps with pair selection and direction what about things like just holding trades and taking profit and um and things like that oh yeah exactly so if you um if you're confident in the long-term direction it's easier to hold a trade rather than maybe like in the past, I would have taken a hundred percent off the table at this level for a certain reason. But when you know the long-term direction, you have much, you have greater confidence to hold mm. longer. And then a trade I'll show later, I, I left it in for, I just left in like 0.2%. So I took out like the majority of the position, but I left that bit because I knew I was fundamentally correct. Mm -hmm. And it, it brought in like, a good amount of like extra profits so yeah really good and I, go on sorry oh no 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 no. that's what i was gonna say so just that, that yeah was... and i was gonna say that that you know fundamental analysis is like when it comes to picking and choosing our direction sam you've been with me for a while and i'm mm -hmm. consistently calling the the medium to long-term trends right short term is 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 you know more driven by liquidity and uh, stock hunting etc but generally you know we don't have to be right all the time on a trade idea, but when we are right on a trade idea, we know we can capitalize and we know that we're buying low and selling high, right? 
So, so how accurate would you say um, fundamental analysis, you know, the spreadsheet that we use, for example, is in terms of, I'm not saying that it's not, it's never 100% accurate, right? But from mm. a, from a, from a foundation of, if you're just buying the divergences with risk off or risk on sentiment, et cetera, it's a, how accurate would you say it is in terms of maybe a percentage from maybe 90, 80% or something like that? Ooh, okay. So I would say it's changed, you know, COVID's definitely changed the way that I looked at the spreadsheet because before right. COVID, mm-hmm. I would say it was like 90%. It was like, you could just look at that trade one, one versus uh, six, seven, eight, yeah. and the divergence would be there. But since COVID, you know, everything's, everything changed dramatically, like central banks cut and now they're hiking and you can yeah. profit off that. So the spreadsheet, you can't rely 90% on the spreadsheet, maybe like it's 70%, but mm-hmm. then you have to do out, outside reading as well Absolutely. and back it up for sure. Of course. And, and as we know, for example, um, we, take in, we take risk, we, we, we're talking about maybe risk off, right? So yeah. when we talk about maybe accuracy, we're talking about maybe, let's say, for example, we want to buy the Canadian dollar Swiss franc, right? Yeah. Maybe a, a four versus a seven or something mm-hmm. like that. But we know that in a risk off scenario, the Swiss franc is going to strengthen and the Canadian dollar is, you know, going to yeah. weaken. So we still know the, 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 the value cycle and what typically happens, right? So even though it might not be, you know, prudent to buy the Canadian dollar in a risk off environment, but we still generally know that when risk on comes back, yeah, you know, that the Canadian dollar, you know, is, is a buy. And, uh, and you was here when I was saying to buy the Canadian dollar over Christmas, you know what I mean? From December yeah. and look at what it's done now. Right. Yeah. And I would, um, what was I also going to say, um, that has lost me. I was going to say something, um, about the spreadsheet. Uh, Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say like um, you know, it's a great it's a great tool because it has all the data laid out in front of you. Like you don't have to be scouring the internet. You've got your interest rates, you've got inflation rate, unemployment rate, GDP. The key information's all there in front of you. So I re- I really like it for that as well. Yeah, it simplifies the process because um, you know, fundamental analysis can be overwhelming, right? A lot of people tend to look into all these different things. <laughs> when it comes to fundamentals from money supply to all different types of stuff but we basically focus on what really matters and uh, again Sam has seen the track record of the uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and uh, it's really a godsend it really is so um, from the uh, perspective of uh, trading psychology mm. how has how have I I guess in the group and uh, maybe improved your trading psychology. So what, you know, were maybe your um, flaws or what psychologically was, was, was causing you a lot of maybe problems in your trading and then coming into the group, highlighting it and then, you know, fixing it. And uh, Def- definitely um, over trading was like my, and revenge trading. Those ah, were key ones. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I used to um, over trade a lot, especially when I was in profit with um like a position or i made profit recently i would over trade because i don't know maybe in the in the back of my mind you get a bit hyped you're like okay made some money here i could do some more here more trading here make some more off the move but the group really helped me like tone it down be patient wait for like a1 setups and yeah take my time with it for sure yeah, brilliant. And um, you're right. Over trading is is a massive thing because we come into trading and we want to work and we feel that working hard is by taking trades. Right. Mm. But but in fact, a lot of the hard work is done in the background with reading up on the fundamentals and mental preparation. And, 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 and that, you know, uh, is, is really what, you know, um, allows us to kind of pick the best opportunities and that's what really kind of fundamentals i guess in the group allow you to do right it's just identify the best trades and keeps you in check yeah and i'm i'm always improving psychology like i'm always have to work on it like mm-hmm. uh, i'm not like a i'm not a robot i've still got emotions but it's not as bad as it used to be for sure like i've definitely improved a ton mm-hmm. and i i have to i keep improving bit by bit you know 
and it's it's great. It's really great. Brilliant, brilliant. So, um, what was some of your biggest light bulb moments? Right, you've had, you know, I think you probably had a few, but off the top of the head, could you think of anything where you know what you've been in the group, and then all of a sudden maybe I've said something or you've read something that another trader has said, and it's just literally just been like mind blowing. You're like, ah, you've had that kind of epiphany. Oh, epiphany moment. I, I'm trying to. There was probably um, I don't know. I'd say epiphany moments when you find out about the fundamental divergences, like the whole, the whole like why was like before joining the trading one eighty, I was I was probably trading like strength v strength, but I, the epiphany that like, you realize like, wow, like there's these economic indicators. They're completely different. Economies going two different ways why was I doing this before? Like, why was, how could I, how could I not know about this? You know, <laughs> I'd say that's my main one. I can't think off the top of my head. I'm sure there was definitely more, but. Yeah. I know it's, it's a, it's a, it's a hard question to maybe think of off the top of the head, but if there is as during the uh, course of this interview, maybe if you, if you do think of something that comes to mind, then um, yeah, just, you know, let me know. And, um, but I've, you know, a lot of the uh, traders before have had, you know, their own kind of aha moments where um, I know Lawrence had a few, but what one of the, I think one of the, one of them, he said, ah, um, oh, you know, and it's just gone from my mind now. Uh, I'm suffering from um, some sort of a thing, but yeah. Cause I might be able to, maybe able to back it up as well. I might have shared something. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, for example, you, you, were, you were trading with me uh, during 2020, right. Mm. And uh, where we were calling buying gold. Oh yes, like and yeah, silver. like buying gold during COVID, like that was it was just crazy. Like realizing, like it, it was just constant bias because of the interest rates being um, cut. I think it was yeah, they were being cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it was just a, it was just a, it was just a simple buy, and then yeah, just being like finding out like how we combined fundamentals with that trade idea and how it was just it was going along with it, you know. Brilliant, really yeah, and and I think a lot of people kind of weren't um, ready for it in a sense that maybe because belief is a big part of fundamental analysis, right? You have to believe that the rules are going to work eventually. Short term price action sometimes can convince you otherwise because prices really kind of pull back. And in fact, let's go to a, a gold chart, right? I mm. can go to the gold at the time, and there was, uh, and I've got in on the silver trade, but you know, that worked out to be like a, about an, an 80 to one type trade. Yeah, that was so, crazy. Yeah, but uh, Sam was there, by the way, as well, as when, when we were calling it, right? We were calling that trade. So gold, again, we were talking about buying around here, weren't we? Mm. Talking about here. And um, sometimes, you know, while you're in the trade, you know you might want to buy gold, right? We're like, okay, buy gold because the central bank is – is, is cutting rates and um, they're trying to devalue the dollar to support the economy, right? And you're seeing gold go the other way and traders are like, well, why is gold going the other way? Fundamentals don't work. We know that what they were doing was just buying as prices were going cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because fundamentally they knew where gold was going to go. Yeah, they knew what was coming. Sure. You know, so short term... We know fundamentals, there's there's a lot going on in the short term, but medium to long term, you know, so I think some of the traders ended up buying around here. Did you buy, did you buy a gold or silver? Uh, I bought, I was in, I was in gold and silver at times, but I remember like on one of my brokers, I got liquidity hunted. It was, yes. it was silly. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. You got, yeah. Otherwise you would have been in that trade. In fact, I think I did a video about that. Yes, you well. did. Yeah. And it was just with one broker, like no one else had that spike. It was, crazy. <laughs> oh, it was yeah, those pesky brokers, man. Um, but yeah, fundamentally, you know, this was an, again a, a massive eye opener uh, for traders because in the short term, it must have looked like I was talking a lot of craziness and saying, well, you know, Leon says that gold should be going up right now, silver should be going up right now. But in the short term, this was just the buying opportunity, right? And then we saw what was happening you know banks have got a scale in with you know uh, due to iceberg orders they're trying to avoid slippage and trying to get as much liquidity for their buys as possible so um 
this is the stuff that happens. It's the stuff that I guess I, I teach and you'll get to know about if, um, you know, uh, you join. So um, talk us through, matter of fact, one of your biggest trades or maybe the last profitable trade that you've taken from top to bottom. So from I can remember my, my yeah. last biggest trade mm -hmm. was um, CAD Yen. I'll give you the date. Hold up. Yeah, uh, CAD Yen. Let's have a look. The date is... 21st of September 2021. Okay, so 2021 September. Yes. Ah, uh, you bought down here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21st September, brilliant. Yeah, I remember that trade. That was a nice CPR, right? I'm pretty sure. I don't have it. I wish I had the nah, journal that I had it in, but it you might be able to, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the CPR. And I kind of had a demand zone there as well for that pin, yeah. but I kind of had one drawn out. There was a demand zone. I think there might have been something. Nah, the, the thing was earlier, but it was there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit of a demand zone in and around this area here. Quite a wide one, but that was a really nice um, CPR, which would have started from this zone from here, right? Yeah. That's it. I do remember that trade. And it was like I took like a one hour outside candle. Ah, oh, brilliant. Down there. Yeah, down here. There. Excellent. 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 So that was it, right? Brilliant. So do you remember the uh the actual entry? Was it uh... if you turn on if you have the outside candle indicator, um it'll, it's one uh, you should be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's that the left. So the left. Yeah, that yeah, that one, that one. That one there, yeah? And the stop was, my stop was behind that large wick. Though. Ah, brilliant. So there it was. Boom. Excellent. Right there. And stop was just behind that. That large How wick. How many yeah. pips? Maybe about 10. To uh, yeah, minutes. about 10, 15. Like I usually... Something like maybe there. Yeah. It's a really nice trade. Oh, look at that. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> really nice. And you held it to where? I think, let me check on my chart. Yeah, I think I, I held it to the top and it went back down, took me out, but I took profit on the way. Like, um, if you have the target fib out, yeah, I, I took the majority at 80% and that will give the risk reward I was at. Okay, brilliant. One second. Uh, so target, oh, done it the other way around. <laughs> Silly me. Um, reverse. There we are. So somewhere around there. And I held, yeah, I took like 80% off then. And then it came back down, taking me out. Cause I'd like 0.2 left and I've right. trailed my stop. So yeah. So about a nearly a 10 to one. Yeah. Pretty great. much fantastic trade. Fantastic trade. Did you ever, did you ever scalp? Did you go through a scalping phase? I, yes. Yeah, so I'm like, on yeah, back in the yeah, back in the day, I had scalping. I had like MT4 indicators of like sniper arrows or something <laughs> silly. Yeah, I've been yeah. There. It's just too much stress, and you have to be at your computer. Like it's much better just setting alerts and waiting for opportunities. Absolutely right. Absolutely. So this was one of your biggest trades. Um, what was the last trade you uh, you took? The last trade I took recently. Yeah. Well, last, the, uh, the, last actually the. Last oh. profitable trade. Last profitable. Uh, New the New Zealand yen stock fund, the one that we just. Oh, you took you took that one, yeah. Yeah. That brilliant. Was really nice brilliant. Brilliant. So that was the uh, get rid of that. So that was the the stop hunt. Excellent. So it's just right there. A lot of people took this trade. Yeah, it just it lined up decent. Yeah, yeah. it did line up really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, da, 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 da. there it was. So your entry was... I'll tell you, hold up. Uh, my entry is at 77.839. 83, so 83 was probably around there. Yeah, about 83, yep. And stop loss of? My stop loss was uh, 77.52. 52. So a bit below there. Below. Yeah, right, just below there. And uh, at the moment, it went... Around three to one, right? Lovely. Yeah, I'm still holding it. I took I took half the position off at two to one because yeah, I only yeah. got in one. But... Yeah, brilliant. Again, it's a profitable trade now, right? Mm -hmm. so you can't lose from here. You definitely can't lose from there. But did you manage to only enter into one position? 
Yeah, yeah, only one position. Yeah, because he didn't, didn't pull back enough, right? No, not enough. Back but... enough, but yeah, we enter into multiple positions. That would have been a really nice trade if it would, you know, entered into, you know, a few, uh, maybe two positions. And yeah, but, following fundamentals, like, I'm happy to hold it, of course. You don't get worried about, you know, the pullbacks. And even if, let's say, for example, worst case scenario, it does pull back, right? It doesn't really matter because we know, you know, long term, this is, you know, these are the things that happen but your, your trading is judged not over the, you know, the, the your, your last, you know, five trades. It's judged over, you know, your, the last 50 trades, right? Last 100 trades and the process and making sure that you're taking those A1 setups. Yeah, exactly. Long term for sure. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, Sam, um, thanks for that. And so if you were to convince somebody or I should really phrase the question differently, I don't <laughs> want to convince anybody to do anything because it's not financial advice, but from the perspective of if someone is out there listening to um, this video, this podcast, and they are on the fence, right? They're a struggling trader or they're a break-even trader. Um, they may be interested in the bit of fundamentals. What would you say uh, to that person when it comes to joining Trading 180? I would say go for it. like Because what's the worst that could happen? You know, I've only gained from being in this group and... I'm sure if even if you have like if you've heard nothing of fundamentals or technicals, you have like there's so much to learn. There's a there's so much um value that can be gained. But you know, I'd just say go for it. What's the worst that can happen? You know? Yeah, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, <laughs> I mean, to me, it's a case of they, you know, people might just and people do, right? They they generally tend to some of the what a lot of the guys and it's funny because I get this question a lot right from um in emails and so like someone recently said this to me and said well what's the success rate of your students yeah as far as um how many of them are profitable and so I always reply I always reply probably maybe around about 10 percent 10 15 percent maybe mm. and so somebody out there might be thinking well that means you're a you're a terrible teacher and it's and I'm like no because not really it's just the natural order of things so if you go to class how many how many students are going to get A's exactly it's a minority <laughs> exactly it's, a, it's just a minority right if you look at society how many people earn over a certain amount or do you know what I mean a, a six I mean and success is measured differently in different not necessarily financially or anything like that but just from if we are looking at it financially you know, you've got the top, you know, 2% of the world that own like probably 99% of the wealth, right? So it is yeah. always a, there's always a, a difference as far as um, there's always going to be a, a small minority that do make it. It's not because I'm a bad teacher or the strategy doesn't work. Things like even life happens, right? Students will come in thinking that it's, you know, it's I'm going to learn this in, you know, a couple of weeks and then I can just bounce, right? Yeah. Then they come in thinking, all right, it's a lot harder than I thought. Some people don't take to fundamental analysis. Some people haven't got the time because, like I said, life happens, right? You've got children, you've got your job, you've got other stresses and things like that in life. Some people just don't follow the process. They're mixing and matching strategies. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's so many different things as to the reasons why traders or the 85 percent maybe 90 percent of people don't necessarily um benefit from you know trading 180 yeah i have to, I have to also say that you have to be really driven and enjoy trading you have to enjoy yes. it because yeah. you have to enjoy it you have to get up you have to if you're reading fundamentals you really got to enjoy the process mm. and when you're taking losses you still have to enjoy it that's just part of trading you're gonna mm -hmm. take losses you're gonna lose a bit of money but at the end of the day like you're you're enjoying doing it you're enjoying the process of trading and yeah that will that definitely you have to have that you have to and that's a great point sam you have to actually like trading for real, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean because some people get into this thinking like you say it's just oh all right, all right, i'm gonna you know just take do the technicals and fundamentals just tell me what i need to know tell me what i need to know mm -hmm. but the minute you come up against, for example, you know, maybe a loss or two or three, which is normal in trading, right? Yeah. You, have, you have losing streaks. Last, I think not last year, the year before, I think I had a losing streak of 11 trades in a row. I think yeah. it was 2020. Wow. Crazy, isn't it? But I made it yeah. back in like the next five trades and exactly, more. Exactly, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So it happens, but you you will not go through that, that losing streak 
yeah, and come out the other side if you're not interested or you haven't got the belief that, you know, you, you want to learn about trading and still continue trading and figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. You have to enjoy it because what's going to make you want to read articles on interest rates and inflation and the economy if you're not interested in it, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. I can just watch cat videos, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, yeah, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or, or something else, exactly. There's always going to be something else to take your attention away. So that's a great point, Sam, is, is that you actually have to like trading. You have to like the fundamentals. You have to enjoy the technicals and uh, really find it interesting and fascinating and want, in, and want to, uh, you know, go f- um, continue on with it. Exactly. Right? And like watching yeah. trades played out, like I wish there's a few trades that I've just missed, but I was right about like, remember when Pound had the su- surprise hold in um, November? Yeah. I um, saw that coming. Pound you like you can see it in pound USD. You can see the pound, um, uh, pound dollar right is is here. Yep. When they held off the November hike, I think. Oh god, yes. Yeah. About November yeah. time at yeah. the top. Yeah, at the top of that, I was waiting for an entry, and then I was on holiday seeing my grandparents in America. Even further up, I I think it start. I was I was entering trades right at the top of that peak. Right. And I got stopped out a few times, and I was on holiday. I couldn't enter, and then they they held and it just dropped and dropped but it's it's i find it i'm still satisfied knowing that like it played out you know i wasn't even in it but i it was just that feeling as well and that's another great point as well right it's seeing your fundamental idea even if you're not in the trade it's knowing that you're right about the direction and the more right you are about the trade idea eventually you're gonna catch that move Exactly. Yeah. I I went. I go through the same. The same thing happened to me, right? So I wanted to get in on the CAD yen, CAD Swiss, yeah, in December. I remember mm-hmm. I told everybody that I'm not really trading around December, right? Oh God, yeah, I missed trades then. Yeah, well. so mm-hmm. I missed. I missed this move. Yeah, I missed this move. Wait, where is it now? Where's the? Uh, sorry, that was the the CAD yen, the CAD Swiss, right? I missed this move. Yeah. I missed also as well the, the, the New Zealand moves. This one. Right. And this one. Well, this one didn't really go anywhere, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's it actually. You had your it, eyes on. No, it? actually, there wasn't even an entry here. There wasn't an entry in it. I was, I'm waiting for a, a bit of a stop hunt below that. Uh, but this was the move because prices came back down and I was waiting for that. Yeah. I wasn't even looking at my trading view, but then I come back to the discord in the new year. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a, and there was a dollar, there was a dollar, um, a dollar yen trade. I think Ken got into it as well. It was before, it was before Christmas anyway, it was like this beginning of December. Right. So he got involved in that as well. So, uh, so yeah, there was loads of um, fundamentally divergent trade that went trades that went for like, you know, hundreds of pips, yeah. You know, but but we take we take comfort in the fact that our analysis is correct, right? That is the thing. If you can keep doing the fundamentals and they play out, mm. that's you, you know, you're, you're and it motivates me. It's just yeah. more motivation to yeah. that you know you know what you're doing. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So Sam, thank you very much for that. Really, really appreciate you coming on and giving your uh, honest opinion on the on the group and you know the mentoring and um and yeah, uh, thank you so much for that, man. No problem. My pleasure. Yeah. All right, mate. Take it easy. Yeah. Speak to you. Cheers. All right.